Hi again. So in this video, uh, what we're going to be doing is looking at how we can insert a record into our MySQL database using a web form that we've created. Uh, and that means that we can essentially set up a website that we can begin to maintain by adding, editing or deleting records ourselves through a uh, web interface rather than having to go through this kind of interface where you need to go into the database and all this stuff. So um, what we're doing today is actually inserting records into the category table, which I have open here. You can see there are two columns, the ID and the name. Remember the category ID is not something that the user of the website is ever really gonna see. Um, and if you have a look at the structure of the, the table, you can see it's been set to auto increment, um, which means that the database itself is, uh, will take care of the category ID. So the next record that's entered um, will automatically have an ID higher than five. It cannot replicate one of these ones. So all our user will be doing is entering a new name or a name for a new category, and then that will be inserted into here. Okay, so uh, where am I? In, um, in Notepad here, just if you're back in the add category page that we worked on last time, uh, we just need to put our form in. So uh, the form itself, um, the method, that it's going to be sending the information through to the next page is going to be the post method and the action, in other words where it's sending that information it's obviously going to index.php again but the page going in that main content area is going to be called enter category. Now um, one thing I should I guess address in this uh, in this video is that I'm only going to be doing the actual insertion of the new record in this video um, then the sec a second video will then cover how to do a confirmation page. So uh, it'll be a two-parter for this. Um, just close off that form down here. Right, so uh, what we need is a text field. So it's an input tag. Uh, the type is text. It actually defaults to text, so you don't need that, but it's always nice to. Um, we'll give it a name, and the name will be cate category, I guess. Actually, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, what happened there? My cursor's gone dancing, sorry. Um, where it says, I wonder if I actually put the word category. I'm actually going to replace that, sorry, with the word name because if I just jump into my database here, that actually corresponds with the column that will be inserting information to. So it's quite nice to have that to match. So, name it is. Um, then we want the size. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, I'll put 40, and then the maximum length, always useful to have that to stop people putting too much stuff in there. Uh, something like that, 50. You can play around with that if you want. And then obviously close down that paragraph. And, and then the second thing that we need is a submit form, which again is an input tag, Oops. but this time the type is going to be submit. Now um, the name of this, I'm going to make this called submit as well. And the value, which is the text that appears on the button, um, might be add category. So that's what the user will see. Okay, and again, close off that paragraph. So we'll just save that and then just have a quick look at the website here and log in to our admin panel to, oops, to check that that works. And there's our form. Great. And if I submit that, that will go try to go to a page called enter category, which obviously it's going to fail because it doesn't exist yet. So um, that's all we need to do here in add category. What we'll do now is actually create that enter category page. So create a new PHP page and go ahead and save it as enter category. Spell it right. There we go. And um, at the start, I'm just going to go ahead and return to my add category page. I'm just going to copy in that little bit of information at the top, the bit that we did before where we um, just sort of protected the administration pages. I think it's worth putting that in on all pages because if someone tries to get in here without logging in, we don't want them to have any access to it. Um, and the next thing we want to check on here is um, has the user come to this page from the add category page because if not then uh, then all sorts of weird things could happen so um, we probably just want to check and make sure that they've actually 
submitted that form from their query page. So um, check to see if user has no, I was going to say um, has submitted the their category form. And the way to do that is I'm just going to use my bit here, my submit button. I'm just going to check and see if this has actually been sent through or not. Um, so I'll just go if, and if it's not set, we're going to bounce them out. So there we go, there's the exclamation mark for not set. And it's been sent in the post array because it was using the post method. Um, and the thing that we're looking for is submit. So if that is not there, because that would mean this if statement is true, we're just then going to redirect them using this header. So we'll set the location to be an index.php and the page is going to be admin. There we go. So that should deal with that unexpected situation where if they haven't submitted the form. Um, so now if they have, we're going to enter the new category. Here we go. Struggling with my spelling here. Um, so we'll just do it in two steps. The first step is to um, create a dynamic query where we grab the information um, out of the post array that they entered, the name of the new category, and then we're going to run that query. So here's my first step. So I'm just going to call it new category underscore SQL. And it's an insert query. So it's going to be insert into the name of the table, which in this case is category. I'll Turn here and show you. There's the name of our table called category, um, and the column or the yeah the name of the column that we're inserting information to is name, and there it is there name name, and then the values that we are inserting. Um, let me think now. Do they need to go in speech marks? Let's chuck them in speech marks. See what happens. Um, there's only one value, and it needs to go inside apostrophes. And what that's actually going to be is whatever they entered in that form. So on the previous page, you can see the, the form, the sorry, the text field rather, was called name. So we're just going to grab that out of the post array. So um, that's well, then that it needs to be concatenated because you can't include a variable directly into a string. So I'm going to need to oops, put a speech mark there. Oh gosh, I didn't like that. Speech marks to stop the string, a full stop concatenate, and then we go looking through the post array and we grab the information called name, and then we have to reconcatenate, restart the string. There's our apostrophe that was going after the bit of information, that's right. There's the bracket that ends it, and there's our speech mark to end the string, semicolon. So let's just double check, well that's right, it gets pretty messy, but you can see there our apostrophe, everything inside there is the information that's been sent through. And you can see we left the string there and the stuff that was concatenated into that string is this. And the only thing is, of course, you could be subject to um, uh, SQL injection attacks or you could have things where you have uh, apostrophes and that sort of stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, in here, use the MySQLi real escape string. So MySQLi underscore real escape string. And then we'll just wrap a bracket around the post name. There we go. Um, hang on. Oh, and now, sorry, I'm used to MySQL. MySQL. Um, that has two parameters. I just need to put in the DB connect parameter first comma and then the thing that we're actually um, escaping there we go right so that should grab the information out of that post array that we need and then the next step is to run that query so um, we'll say new category oh god spelling um, MySQLi Called query and then in brackets remember there's two parameters the um, the database connection string and then in the query that it's running which in this case we call new category underscore SQL okay so that should run the query and insert it so all we need really down the bottom um, 
now is just a little bit of code and a little bit of HTML to say, yep, it's been entered and click here to return to the admin page. So uh, we just go um, new category has been entered. And then uh, create a link that goes back to the um, admin page. Do it and close off that paragraph. All right, so let's uh, save that and now go and test it and just see exactly what I've done wrong or right. So here we go. So here's my add category page. Um, I'll put one in called test, add category. So far, so good. New category has been entered. Turn to admin panel. Now um, I'm going to go on a limb and say something's not working because when I browse my database here, test is not entering so let's see what's going on okay all right hang on so quickly looking through here you can see I've got oh yep two open brackets I haven't closed down the um, bracket going around the values so if I put a bracket there and save that let's see if we have any more luck now add new category test Oh, there we go. And now you can see it has been entered there. And we know it's in the database because it has appeared here. And if I go into my database and rebrowse, there it is. Oh gosh, you can see I've done a fair amount of <laughs> testing in the past. So um, you see the actual uh, table itself has taken care of the ID. If I go ahead and add a new one, there it is there. If I return to my database and browse, you can see it's automatically given an additional number. So, um, sorry about the uh, mistake there, but there we go. Um, it seems to be working now. Um, so what we have is the ability to add a new record to our database. Uh, what I'll do in the next video is just add the ability to have a confirmation page, because obviously at the moment now, if I spell something wrong and hit add, it's automatically going in, and that's not ideal. Uh, and then from there, what we will do is we will look at how to delete a category and also how to add, uh, edit an existing one. Okay. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.